1863, Peter works as a slave in a cotton plantation with his wife Dodi Ann and their children. When he learns he's been sold to a new owner, he spends the last moment with his family in prayer until the white men come to drag him out, ignoring the police from the children. Peter tries to fight back, yelling and struggling against their hold, but the men don't hesitate to aim their gun at Dodi Ann and this instantly makes Peter stops, accepting to get on the cart on his own feet. Unfortunately now the men want revenge, so they hit him anyway before dragging him again. Peter and a bunch of other slaves are transported in a cage as if they were cattle, and through the bars, Peter promises his children one day he'll come back for them as they try to run after him in tears. After a long time spent on the road, they arrive at their new working location, which happens to be the construction of a railroad. The conditions here are a hundred times worse than in the plantations. The heads of the slaves that dare to disobey decorate the entrance as a warning. They sleep in cages, and even while they're behaving and working hard, the white masters won't hesitate to hit them and insult them. To make matters worse, they quote the Bible to justify their actions. There are also lots of feral dogs around, who are sent after any slave that tries to run away. When a slave does misbehave, sometimes they're just whipped, but other times they're shot right there in the middle of the field, and other times the boss Fassel will brand them right on the face. Fassel keeps two men as his right hands, Harrington and Knowles, who was also bought as a slave but was chosen to become part of the guards because of his hunting skills. Peter tries his best to behave, but even when he tries to help his friend Gordon when he falls, he gets yelled at for daring to do anything that isn't working. One evening, after all the slaves are sent back to their cage, they have to watch how John is thrown inside while wiggling in pain because of his branded cheek. A slave named Thomas is trembling in fear and Peter tries to comfort him by asking him to remember his loved ones and to think of this as just work. He also offers the word of God, who is always watching over them, but John scoffs at him because clearly there isn't a God that cares about them. Peter doesn't react to the taunt though, he keeps calm and promises John to pray for him. Sometime later, Peter overhears two white guards talking about some very important news. Lincoln has freed the slaves, and now all the ones that managed to escape are running to Baton Rouge to seek help. The conversation suddenly interrupted when a guard notices Thomas made a mistake with the food and intends to punish him, but Peter comes in his defense, explaining he's just a kid. The guard hits him before taking out his gun to point it at Peter, ready to kill him for such insolence, but Fassel stops him because he's taken a particular interest in Peter because of his attitude. Later, when Peter is back in the cage, Fassel approaches him to tell him he's his god and Peter is his dog now, to which Peter replies that then he should be fed the same meat as the dogs. At that moment Fassel just laughs, but the next day, he puts Peter in chains and makes him kneel in front of him while his dog keeps barking and growling at Peter, only a few inches between them. Now the dog has committed Peter sent to memory. Later over lunch, Peter tells the other slaves about Lincoln and Baton Rouge, which they could reach after five days of walking through the swamp. Some of the slaves are hesitant because surviving the swamps isn't easy, but when Peter reminds them they probably won't survive this place either, he gets the support of a few men. Now they only need to wait for the right time to escape. Sometime later, a slave dies in the middle of work, and the guards make Peter drag him to the pit where they throw all the bodies together. There are some white deserters that should be digging, but as soon as they see Peter, they say a black man should do this instead, thus Peter ends up grabbing a shovel to fill in the pit. Peter realizes this is the perfect chance for him to pull off the plan, so he waits patiently for the guards to be distracted by an explosion on the field and jumps on them to kill them with a shovel and steal a knife before running away. The other slaves and the deserters see this and take the chance to start running as well, hitting a few guards in the way which allows John to steal a gun. Other guards raise the alarm and immediately begin shooting the runners, killing as many as possible before they're lost in the woods. Fassel does some shooting of his own too, killing the deserters, but he hates the fact Peter got away with it and calls for Harrington, Knowles, and the dogs to go after him. Peter manages to team up with three of his friends, and he guides them through the forest by keeping an ear up for any dangers approaching. Eventually they manage to find the swamps and most of the team doesn't have trouble crossing, but Thomas freezes when he sees the crocodiles, allowing the dogs to catch up with him. After the beasts have done enough damage, Fassel calls them back and demands to know where the group is going, but Thomas refuses to answer. This prompts Fassel to offer a deal. If Thomas tells him where the others are going, he'll allow him to leave. A terrified Thomas confesses what he knows and is indeed allowed to go into the swamp. But as soon as he turns around, Fassel shoots him and lets the crocodiles eat him. Meanwhile, Peter, John, and Gordon finish crossing the swamp safely. Peter thinks they should take the other swamps, but John won't take orders from anyone and decides to take the horse trail, feeling like he can stay safe, thanks to the gun he stole. Gordon wants to follow Peter wherever he goes, but Peter thinks they'll be harder to track if they split up, so Gordon chooses his own way through the woods after Peter reminds him to follow the sound of Lincoln's cannons. Afterward, Peter begins choosing his own way, only to discover his leg is bleeding because he had been touched by a bullet after all. He needs to do something about it soon or the dogs will smell the blood, but first he needs to run for a while to put some distance between him and Fassel. Moments later, Peter comes across a house owned by a white family that also keeps slaves. First Peter grabs a vine from a tree to tie above his wound as a tourniquet, 
Then he sneaks around by staying hidden behind a pile of logs. This allows him to reach for some water from the pump and to notice the clothes hanging on a rope. Taking a big risk, Peter across the garden and steals a shirt before running into the forest. But one of the family kids sees him and alerts everyone by ringing a bell. Fassel hears the noise and follows it to the house, where he's told by the family about the direction Peter took off. Peter's running as fast as possible, only stopping to bandage his wound with the shirt he stole. Moments later, he takes the bloodstained shirt off and hides it in a trunk for the dogs to find while he hides under the swamp water. Fassel and his men fall for the trick and make their way down the road thinking Peter has crossed the swamp, but he actually comes out after the group is gone. Suddenly, a crocodile takes the chance to attack him, so Peter thinks fast and pushes it away with a thick branch before killing it with his knife. At that moment, Dodi Ann wakes up from a nightmare where she saw her husband in danger. The kids wake up as well and worry about their father, but Dodi Ann promises he's alive and that he'll come soon because he survived things no other man could. When night falls, Peter hides on top of a tree and uses his knife to remove the swamp leeches from his body, which means some blood drips on the plants surrounding him. Meanwhile Fassel and his men find the dead crocodile and open it up to find it empty, which means Peter escaped through here. The group decides to camp for the night and feast on the crocodile which prompts Harrington to actually compliment Peter for his skill. Fassel immediately scolds him for it and tells him about the lesson his father taught him. If you give black people just a tiny thing, they'll ask for more and take things like their jobs and their lands. The next morning, Peter continues to run while making sure to keep his body covered with mud and animal excrement. It means he's constantly surrounded by flies but it helps cover up his scent. When he has to cross another swamp, he thinks about his family and prays to his lord to keep the fear of the beasts away, and when the sun suddenly shines on him, he takes it as a sign. While Fassel splits his group to cover more ground, Peter's lucky to find an abandoned treehouse with clean water and some leftover food. There are also some hot coals, so Peter uses them to heat up his knife in order to cauterize his leg wound. Afterward, he puts the coals on the empty bucket and takes them with him as he climbs a tree to throw the smoke at a beehive. This scares the bees away and allows Peter to take some honey. Fassel sees the smoke and begins riding toward it, but Peter's already on his way out. The treehouse also has a boat that a snake is using as its own hiding place, so Peter carefully pushes it away with a branch before jumping into the boat and sailing away as he enjoys the taste of the honey. In the meantime, Dodi Ann is approached by her master, who tells her he's sold her and she'll be gone in two days. Her children aren't allowed to go with her though, because her new master will give her a new husband. Dodi Ann is deeply hurt by the news and still wants to wait here for her husband to come back, so she takes a rather drastic choice to avoid being sold. She goes to one of the machines used for the production of cotton and puts her hand inside, pretending she's being caught in an accident. Back to Fassel, he finds the treehouse thanks to his dog's nose and manages to keep track of Peter's direction while he crosses the river. Peter hurries to make his way into the woods where he's surprised to meet again with John, who is angry because now the white men will come after him as well. Peter swears he's not being followed and teaches John how to hide his scent, but John ignores him before they start running again. Just a moment later, they hear the dogs barking and hurry to hide. Peter gets inside an empty trunk while John climbs up a treetop. The dogs manage to follow John's scent anyway, allowing Fassel and his men to easily find him. John refuses to come down so Fassel makes him fall with a shot before demanding information on Peter through violent means, but John still won't talk. Fassel decides to take his head and give it to Harrington and Knowles for them to take it back to camp as a message. Peter closes his eyes to avoid witnessing his friend's death and offers a prayer for John's soul. After waiting a few hours to put some distance between himself and Fassel, Peter comes out of the trunk when it starts to rain only to discover exactly how they killed John, which shakes him to his core. He forces himself to keep going with grief heavy on his mind until suddenly he sees a bunch of horses running by, including one on fire. Peter follows the direction they came from and finds a house on a plantation, but everything is on fire and all the white people are dead. It seems the slaves here also heard the news from Lincoln and took matters into their own hands. With his knife out just in case, Peter enters the house and slowly walks through the rooms until he comes across the dining table, instantly throwing all caution to the wind and jumping on the food and wine to feed his tired body. He doesn't stop until he hears a weird noise coming from upstairs, and he follows it until he finds a dying girl stuck under a harp that she keeps playing as a plea for help. Peter immediately rescues her and takes her outside, where he puts her down on a table before trying to fetch some water. The girl is scared though and makes him stay as she gives him her cross pendant, and Peter takes it understanding what she needs, a prayer promising gods with her. He's so distracted that he doesn't hear Harrington approaching until it's too late, and Peter has to drop his knife and step away from the girl if he doesn't want to get shot. The girl dies as soon as Peter leaves her, and he's so furious that he dares to violently turn around and kill Harrington by using the cross as a stake. At that moment, Knowles also arrives, but Peter thinks fast and grabs Harrington's weapon to shoot him. Knowles tries to explain to Peter that someone capable of killing a crocodile may be accepted by Fassel in his ranks, but Peter calls him the worst kind and leaves him to die. Hearing Fassel approach because of the barking, Peter decides to run into the cotton fields for cover, and when the dog comes too close, he shoots it. Fassel eventually comes across the body which makes him even more determined to catch Peter. The next morning, 
Peter arrives at a beach filled with the bodies of white men that died during the confrontations against Lincoln's army. Unfortunately, they don't have any provisions for him to take, but in the distance, Peter can see the ships and hear the cannons that indicate Lincoln's men are near. Excited at the thought of finally reaching freedom, Peter begins running again, but suddenly a horse appears by his side and he's pushed to the ground with a few hits. It's Fassel, who offers Peter some of the meat he had asked for back in the cage and asks him to beg. Since Peter won't obey, Fassel takes out his gun and reminds Peter he's his god, but before he can pull the trigger, someone else shoots him first. Peter tells the falling body that he's no god before turning to meet his saviors, who are Lincoln's native guard led by Lieutenant Kiyu. Peter's body finally gives in to exhaustion and hunger, so the soldiers take him to the infirmary tent on their camp in Baton Rouge. Because his leg wound is infected, the nun nurse makes Peter wheeze, and for a few days Peter does nothing but dream about his family. Once Peter is feeling better, he sees one of the soldiers to get his new papers as a free man, although he has to make up some information he doesn't know, like his age. Unfortunately he isn't allowed to leave and search for his family yet, the white soldiers are taking advantage of the fact the slaves are technically stolen contraband and give them two choices, they can work on the federal farms or join the army. Peter refuses to keep following orders, but when the soldier points out that joining the army can help him rescue his family and be free for good, Peter accepts to join. Afterward, Peter discovers the army has found Gordon too, and he's hurting but alive. Peter is glad to see him, but it pains him to tell him about John. Then Peter goes to see Kiyu for his uniform, but first he's asked if he'd be interested in helping the cause by posing for something called a photograph. Peter is wary, but Kiyu promises the white photographers are harmless and their intentions good. It turns out these men are taking pictures of the reality behind slavery to let the world know, and Peter agrees to show his bare back to the camera, exposing the scars of hundreds of whippings. Next, Peter's taken to see the general, who asks him about all the information he may have about the railroad the enemy's building. After Peter shares all the intel he has, the general stares at his picture and points out that those scars equal disobedience, which isn't a good quality to have in the army. Kiyu tries to take Peter away, but Peter defends himself anyway, explaining that those scars mean he's been beaten up many times yet he never stopped fighting, which is also important for a soldier. At dawn, Kiyu takes Peter and all his soldiers to the trenches, where he reminds them they're fighting for freedom with a heartfelt speech. Many soldiers fall to enemy fire while they're still marching, but the group doesn't let it stop them and joins the fight without hesitation. Soon there's fire surrounding them everywhere, and Peter is hit by an explosion, leaving him unconscious in a puddle for a few minutes. As soon as he wakes up, he drags his sore body through the mud to keep on helping, shooting at the enemy whenever he has the chance and offering blessings for any dying companion he sees in the way. Kiyu falls in battle, and eventually Peter finds a wounded Gordon as well, seeing his friend in so much pain and fear inspires him to come out from his hiding spot to run toward enemy lines. His intentions to stop the cannons, and thanks to all the soldiers that see him as an inspiration and follow him, the native guard overpowers their enemies and obtains their victory. Now that war's over, the army visits every plantation to free the slaves. When they arrive at the house Peter used to work at, everybody's shocked, not believing the news, but happiness soon takes over their mood when they finally understand freedom's actually real. After seeing his former master die in the hands of justice, Peter begins looking for his family, almost having a breakdown when he can't find them. However, when he begins offering a prayer under his breath, he glances to his side and lets God guide him to finally find his wife and kids, who run to him to meet him with a hug. The photograph of the real Peter became an iconic part of history and traveled the entire world many times over. In 1863, thanks to Lincoln's proclamation, over 400,000 black people escaped to freedom. By 1865, nearly 4 million slaves in America were recognized as free. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.